Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Expert Insights Webinars. I am your host, Don McLean, and today's session is focused on modernizing the functional service provider FSP relationship, innovations to bring value beyond global and scalable, presented by MMS. MMS is an innovative, data-focused, and technology-enabled CRO, bringing insights from our global team of highly respected data and regulatory experts across four continents. Here to present today is Diedrich Van Neckerk, Danell Leducer, and Jim Belcom. Diedrich is Head of Operations in South Africa at MMS, as well as an award-winning business coach. He brings more than 20 years of clinical research experience across multiple facets of the industry, formerly with the likes of Bristol-Myers Squibb, Sanofi, IQVIA, the Wits Health Consortium, and others. Danell is Director of Functional Service Solutions at MMS, where she serves as a bridge across operations, project and account management, and business development and client relations, with a focus on growth and enhanced productivity through FSP relationships. Prior to MMS, Danell led teams at Experis and Pfizer. Finally, Jim Belcom is Director of Innovation and Automation at MMS, where his primary focus is on innovation and the development of strategy to enhance the sponsor experience. Prior to MMS, he was Director of Project Solutions at Experis, and Jim is currently an ambassador for the American Cancer Society's Real Men Wear Pink Initiative. Thanks to our presenters for joining us today. As a reminder, your microphones will be muted for the duration of this session, and we'll send out a recording following this call. And if you have questions, please enter them in the Q&A at any time via the icon at the top right of your screen. We'll do our best to answer as many of them as we can at the conclusion of today's session. With that, I'll turn it over to Danelle Leducer. Danelle. Thank you, Don. And thank you everyone for joining. I'm going to speak first on the FSP model. We'll go through the definition of, of exactly what that is some defining characteristics of, of multiple models and the advantages of the FSP model. And then I'm going to hand it over to Diedrich, who's going to talk about modernizing FSP relationships and how you ensure performance in those FSP relationships. And then finally, Jim is going to talk about innovation enhancement through your FSP partnerships and also leave you with some innovation tips for sponsors. So before we delve into the content of our webinar today, I did want to take a moment to expand upon the information that Don presented in our bios. It said that perception is reality. So our perspective or our experiences inform our perceptions. Now, why is this important? When consuming information, whether in a webinar or in a meeting or a one-on-one -on -one discussion, it's important to consider the perspective of the individual or the group in order to understand the perceptions that they're sharing. So in support of that, for example, when the Avoca Group publishes the data in their annual industry reports, they do so from both the sponsor and CRO perspective. They're very clear to delineate so the reader can consider or weigh the perspective when interpreting the data. So in this webinar, we are in essence sharing our perceptions. So there's value in providing our audience some transparency with regard to our perspectives. So we've been on both sides of the equation as an employee of a major sponsor shifting from in-house teams to an outsourced model for the first time, and as a CRO providing functional services in multiple models. In terms of our roles, we've been a medical writer, a data manager, a site monitor, project manager, head of a global biometrics FSP, VP of BD and recruiting, and now our current roles is provided in our introductions um, by Don. So quite a broad footprint in the drug development process uh, is represented here today. We have a potentially broad audience with varying levels of experience in the different outsourcing models. So I wanted to spend just a few minutes on a high level comparison of three common outsourcing models and some defining characteristics of those models. So the question, what is an FSP? will solicit slightly different answers depending on whom you ask. There are various interpretations of the scope of activities and responsibilities in an FSP model, which is because the FSP model is not meant to be one size fits all. There's room for customization to best meet the individual sponsor's business needs and culture. So in essence, an FSP engagement involves a CRO providing a specific functional service 
or suite of services to contribute to a clinical development program rather than providing all services for the whole program. So there's some high level distinctions in this table um, based on different categories of an engagement. Uh, contract terms in project by project, this generally means an SOW uh, for each project or piece of work. Full service and FSP engagements are larger scale, longer term commitments. So you have a longer contract, less paperwork. Shared resources um, means that individuals are usually assigned to multiple clients at once. In a project based model, they may or may not be consistent. Same for full service. In both of these models, the CRO generally has the discretion to plug in resources as they see fit, and the sponsor may have little to no transparency into who is actually doing the work. Now, sponsors can certainly make requests for specific people, and they often do, but there's no guarantee or commitment from the CRO that those individuals will be available. In contrast, in an FSP arrangement, it often allows for or may require a defined team who is close to 100% or 100% dedicated to that sponsor, which really makes sense given that there's a much larger investment required for training and for working within the sponsor systems. Oftentimes there can be uh, this core team who is then supported by a team of flexible resources who come on and off projects as needed, and this allows the FSP to quickly ramp up and down. For pricing models um, in the project based, they are usually deliverable milestones. Full service can be deliverable unit based or milestones that are either deliverable milestones or project milestones. And there's more flexibility uh, offered generally in FSP arrangements, again, as best makes sense for the work or for the sponsor's culture. FTEs or full time equivalents are uh, usually a set amount per resource per month, and that allows budget predictability and greatly simplifies invoicing. Hourly and unit based are also used sometimes in combination with FTE building, depending on the environment and functional area of support. For systems and SOPs, um, FSP work is usually done on sponsor systems and training on sponsor SOPs. And that's part of the draw and efficiency of an FSP model, since there's no time spent for the sponsors teams on learning or, or transferring data or trying to map between systems and tools. The FSP team is truly an extension of the sponsor team. However, for small to mid-sized sponsors, um, some may just not have mature enough systems and processes in place, and this alone should not be a barrier to an FSP model if other factors are present. Um, so that's why this says sponsors where available. Uh, a strong FSP partner should be able to offer both their own systems and, F and SOPs and perhaps work with the sponsor toward building their own if that is or becomes an important goal. Governance uh, usually does not exist in a project by project uh, model as the work is very transactional, um, but some sponsors may consider some form of governance necessary either based on the consistency of the work, their level of dependence on the vendor if it's very high, or the annual amount um, that is invoiced. For in a full service relationship, generally there's executive level governance without much functional or operational level insight or participation. In an FSP model, given that it's very collaborative and integrated, it's important to have governance in place uh, that both the sponsor and the FSP understand and agree to. The governance plan should include uh, both a communication plan and escalation plan, as well as KPIs. Uh, we'll talk more about governance in the next slide, but before we leave here, I just brought up KPIs. So we'll talk about performance metrics. Um, in a project-based model, there may be none, uh, no formal performance metrics or very limited, given the limited scope of work. In a full service engagement, metrics are often based on meeting project milestones and are generally owned by the CRO. In the FSP model, the FSP should actually bring their own metrics to the table as a starting point, but then metrics from there should be developed jointly that are both meaningful and measurable, spanning both deliverables and processes, and the responsibility for meeting them can be shared given the integrated nature of the work in the model. For those in the audience considering whether an FSP model is the right fit for your organization, I wanted to go through some components that should be in place for a successful FSP engagement. Governance, as we mentioned, uh, is developed collaboratively, so there's shared understanding and buy-in. Governance plans are not one size fits all, as it needs to align with the sponsor's culture and goals. 
The FSP devotes senior level governance, structure, and attention to not just the relationship, but delivery across the, the entire portfolio. I've got the one-to-one -one match here highlighted as this can be a challenge for smaller companies, uh, where for instance, say the VP of ClinOps is also serving as both the outsourcing manager and functional area contact for the vendor. Governance should also include metrics as we talked about and a defined escalation plan. So everyone is aware of process and expectations. A collaborative communication strategy is developed to ensure multi-level and seamless communication and to build effective governance structure. There needs to be a consistent uh, flow of work. In order to justify the dedicated or ring-fenced resources, as well as the investment in the level of governance, there has to be a consistent flow of work. It can ebb and flow, as that is the flexibility benefit of an FSP, but there cannot be breaks in the need for support. Uh, integration of operations. The sponsor organization receives the benefits and efficiencies of integration while maintaining FSP provided management, training, and oversight. And also the level of integration with, with the sponsor organization is adjustable and can vary between different functional areas as best fit for the work. So for instance, the regulatory writing team may be fully integrated with the sponsor's team, um, but the FSP may also be doing narrative work, which could be a handoff uh, and back without the integration. So there's lots of flexibility. Optimized delivery uh, based on portfolio transparency to achieve the desired state. And that's really a model where the FSP partner is bringing strategy and process efficiencies, is resource agile while maintaining quality. There has to be an appropriate level of transparency. I don't know that I've ever or rarely have I ever experienced a sponsor who went too far with access, but many do fall short. Sharing simple periodic projections uh, are really not enough to optimize the partnership. Sharing decisions and drivers that affect whole projects and pipelines really enable the FSP to be proactive and strategic regarding resourcing, innovation, and process efficiencies, which leads us to innovation in process and technology. So levels of integration and transparency that were just discussed really influence how much value the FS FSP can bring in terms of innovation and I won't say more on this as Jim Balcom will speak to this topic further in the webinar. Oops, too far. So before I end, I wanna talk about some of the advantages of the FSP model. So over here with all of these items, see that the common theme is really flexibility. Flexibility in all of these items. Flexibility in service providers allows the sponsor company to select best in class service providers, thus optimizing their chance of success. With resources and skill sets, it's a scalable model, allowing clients to adequately resource their departments in line with increased or decreased support requir requirements in real time without the additional burden of HR processes. And additionally, in regards to skill sets, uh, full service CROs um, will advertise the expertise of their teams in your therapeutic area in order to gain the business. In actuality, you know, the A-teams are often reserved for larger companies who commit to many trials, leaving smaller to mid-sized companies with B or C teams. And without the transparency into who's actually doing the work that was discussed previously. Pricing models, as shown in the table, there's multiple pricing models that can be implemented. Simpler is better, of course, but sometimes a mix just makes sense. For example, the engagement may have a core team of 100% dedicated writers or programmers who are billed at a set monthly amount each, aka FTEs. But you may also have a flex team who are trained on the sponsor systems who have access and accounts established and are pulled in turnkey, ready to help during peak workload times. Those resources may be billed hourly as needed. Another mixed model could be unit-based pricing for standard deliverables, such as CSRs or narratives, and then hourly pricing for ad hoc requests, such as briefing docs or health authority responses. Governance, as described also, is developed collaboratively, so it's flexible and it can grow with the engagement. It is not one size fit all, as it needs to align with sponsors' cultures and goals. And geography, almost every FSP these days has multiple global lo locations they need to in order to stay relevant. Sponsors can pick and choose those locations that best suit their business needs. On this side, we talk about really what a true partnership brings and what it means. It is a long-term commitment. Stronger relationships mean better collaboration, 
Frequent communication and transparency into projects and TA pipelines allows the FSP to be proactive and strategic regarding resourcing. Shared expertise. FSPs have broad exposure to what's happening in the industry given their experience with multiple other sponsors of various sizes and varying regulatory authorities. That experience gives them the ability to advise and be consultative on best practices and the evolving regulatory landscape. Continuity, the relationship piece is very important in the FSP model. So both the sponsor and the service provider prioritize consistency in those roles. So there's not a revolving door of points of contact. Likewise, because of the level of the relationship, both sides can expect a high degree of responsiveness. Integration, uh, we talked about shared goals and accountability, and that can even um, lead into shared goals and accountability around metrics. The FSP team often feels like an integral part of the sponsor's delivery unit and in many ways becomes an extension of the sponsor. Innovation and process efficiency with a solid FSP partnership, you don't have to outsource specifically for that. FSP partners bring it to the table. So all of these components allow the integrated teams to be open and collaborative. So as you can see, the long-term, global, integrated, and flexible nature of FSP engagements have a lot of moving parts. And this requires many levels of consideration to ensure the model works as intended. So I'm going to hand it over to Diedrich, who's going to take us through some of those elements or considerations required to ensure high performing global teams and relationships. Diedrich. Thank you, Donnell. Right, so before I continue, uh, please allow me to briefly introduce myself uh, in some more detail. I hold a Master of Science in Medicine, specializing in pharmaceutical science. I had the privilege of starting the South African operations for MMS four years ago, and I head up the operations to this day. Uh, I'm a certified project management professional, certified clinical research professional with the European Association of Clinical Research Professionals. Uh, and I've been in clinical research for 23 years in various roles, uh, ranging from data management monitoring right through to global project management and business operations. Um, I also certified as a business and executive coach in 2014 with the world's largest business coaching firm. And if the last six years uh, working as a coach uh, has taught me anything, it's the importance of the knowledge of people and the skill of proactively developing high performing individuals and teams. And that brings me to the area that I'd like to focus on during today's webinar. How do we utilize our knowledge of people and leadership in the modern era to build FSP relationships with sponsors that allow us to better leverage the advantages of the FSP model? Next slide. So the attraction of the FSP model lies in the flexibility that it offers to become a unique solution to each client. And I think that was clear from um, Donnell's pr uh, presentation. It should offer flexibility around things like scalability, allowing clients to adequately resource their departments in line with increased or decreased su uh, support requirements and in real time. It should offer flexibility around HR processes, such as hiring and onboarding associated with permanent headcount. Um, and it should certainly uh, offer the ability to augment the talent uh, of an internal team. So I think it's clear that there are a lot of advantages to using this a la carte outsourcing model that offer access to functional specialists. But how do we ensure that this partner relationship remains an absolute priority? How do we ensure performance of deliverables on a team level? Next slide. The conventional factors like uh, cultural fit, uh, experience, consistency, and some that's already been mentioned like flexibility and scalability um, when evaluating potential FSP partners are obviously still important, but uh, they are no longer enough. So 
Uh, if we say that, then what are the additional factors that sponsors should consider uh, for a more modern approach to an FSP? There are three that I'd like to focus on today. Firstly, building and maintaining the team. Secondly, the ability to work globally in different regions and time zones. And then lastly, the ability to communicate proactively. Now we achieve these by taking uh, a fresh and proactive approach with uh, recruitment, onboarding, induction, and ongoing training, uh, employee wellness, team building and engagement, and professional and personal development. So allow me to unpack these five areas and share with you how we achieve great success with these in our FSP partnerships at MMS. Next slide. Right, so let's take a look at where it all starts and that's recruitment, right? So recruitment should really be a process that is uh, provided the time and effort required to find ideally the perfect fit for any position. This should include a thorough understanding of the position requirements, um, and it should obviously consider the FSP and the sponsor expectations. If recruiters are going to achieve this, it's vital that advertising and lead generation strategies be accurately targeted. Online job advertising platforms like, for example, Indeed or even LinkedIn are great, and they should obviously be uh, a default or a given. But often a more targeted approach can yield great results. A good example would be to take it one step further and utilize a platform like, for example, the American Medical Writers Association or similar societies to recruit for a medical writer um, as an example or for a specific skill set. If we consider the ability to work globally, the first step to all of this might be to consider which geographic locations might yield the best candidates. And of course, then local knowledge of the best recruitment practices um, are an important requirement. Next slide. So another consideration that is often neglected or underestimated during the recruitment process is the pre-framing, as I like to call it, or the clear upfront positioning of the requirements and expectations of the role from an FSP and a sponsor perspective. This includes things like not only the technical requirements of the role, we, we tend to, to, to do that, but also um, a clear upfront communication of what the leadership style is going to be of the FSP and the sponsor. Uh, what are the corporate values? What's the corporate culture? Um, and of course, uh, what, is the, what is the team culture going to be like? Um, and then of course, uh, the interview process should include all stakeholders and include behavioral and technical skill ev evaluations by experts. So if this is done thoroughly and upfront, it ensures the clear communication and alignment of expectations of both the employer and the employee. This in turn serves to eliminate candidates who had perhaps uh, uh, perceptions that, uh, that were incorrect or that might not be a fit culturally to the organization uh, and I've also found that it excites those who have the same values and work ethic and who want to and can align with what the FSP, the sponsor and the role offer them. So once again, if we consider the ability to work globally, this pre-training and positioning becomes even more important um, if we are recruiting from locations across the globe and working in different time zones. It is in itself a great example of proactive communication um, and the expectation that will be set uh, thereof. Next slide. Right, so when we've put the right effort into ensuring that we have the right fit for a role, and they know what will be expected, and they also know what to expect, we should focus on the right efforts for onboarding, induction, and continual learning next. This area looks to take the work that was started during the recruitment process further to ensure absolute certainty that new hires align with the culture as soon as possible uh, and get even more excited 
about their decision and their newfound team. Right, so how do we do this? Sponsors need to ensure or look for FSB partners that will invest and provide sufficient time for thorough training and place an emphasis um, on uh, things like um, knowledge about the sponsor company. That includes things like the company history, uh, the vision, the mission, what are, what are the company values, um, where possible um, some introductions and certainly more information on what the company leadership looks like, you know, who are they? Um, and uh, it's important that we get new team members to align with all of this um, and to align with the culture as soon as possible. Uh, sponsors should also look for FSP partners that have a strong focus on empowering staff um, and, and, and a focus that enables ownership and belonging. And then last but not least, um, sponsors should look for FSPs that place a, a, a big effort, uh, emphasis, sorry, on relationship building and should also be, uh, this should certainly also be an ongoing focus. Um, so things that should be considered are, you know, what are the, what are the skills that team members of an FSB team are being taught and given um, to, to actually proactively uh, build better relationships? And then something that, uh, sponsors should also look for is, is, is FSP partners that have a learning culture, that place an emphasis on learning at all levels, and as I like to call it, that have a learning mindset. So again, if we consider the ability to work globally, I'd like to emphasize the importance of doing these vital activities despite where team members are located. It's not an excuse not to put in the effort because they're located in another part of the world. This is where local management structures and abilities also become really important when considering an FSP partner. But more about that later. Next slide. So another buzzword is certainly employee wellness. But how do we really master this? Uh, should you expect your FSB partner to do this well? And I think, of course, the answer is, is yes. Um, at MMS, this is achieved by enabling um, our managers enough time um, and training and skill to regularly do one-to-one uh, -one meetings uh, with each and every team member. And these meetings, these one-to-ones, one certainly should not only focus on technical performance but really should, should take a broader approach and look at the overall wellness uh, and place an emphasis on the overall wellness uh, of team members. Um, further to that, um, support programs that are intended to create or, or support wellness um, and also activities for the same purpose should really try and keep in mind and consider all the aspects of the wellness spectrum, and those include emotional, intellectual, physical, social, environmental, spiritual, occupational, and financial wellness. So let me just talk about a few of these. Uh, if we look at emotional wellness, um, you know, how much are we doing and how much responsibility can we take to upskill our team members around emotional intelligence and emotional well-being? When we look at intellectual wellness, are they stimulated? Are they challenged intellectually? Um, and I guess technically in, in, in the job that they are performing. Um, do we encourage and is there a, a, a continuing awareness of the importance of physical wellness? Um, at MMS, uh, one of the ways in which we achieve this is to have yoga breaks. Um, and they only last 10 minutes, but they're really effective um, throughout the day to just enable uh, a focus and an awareness and a support for physical wellness uh, of our team members. Another great example is uh, an employee wellness day that MMS offered its team um, this year 
um, where, em where employees were offered a full day um, as, as, as pay time off um, due to the strange uh, times that, that we found ourselves in um, and, and, and the COVID pandemic. And then lastly, if we look at financial wellness, um, another great example is a, you know, the continued education and support um, from our benefits vendor on the financial wellness um, and personal wealth creation of our team members. Um, this ensures and enables that team members um, have the necessary su support uh, in their personal lives as well to be able to make wise financial decisions um, and, 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 and we do our part to ensure uh, financial wellness. So, if we're doing this effectively globally, um, then uh, this is where local management uh, once again becomes important. Um, but certainly technology can also be leveraged uh, to, to achieve this as well. And then lastly, wellness programs can be regional um, as well. They don't necessarily always have to be centrally managed and um, they don't have to look the same everywhere, considering the, Im the impact that different cultures in different regions might also have uh, on this. Next slide. Right, so team building and engagement. And this is certainly an area that in my experience often gets neglected um, and I believe that once again it's perhaps because it's underestimated um, or often management lack the skill or the know-how to really proactively build high-performing teams. So how do we do this at MMS? Now really there are six elements that you can focus on uh, for the proactive uh, building of a high-performing team and that includes strong leadership, the alignment of goals, understanding the rules of the game as I call it, a clear action plan, support for uh, and a culture of informed decision making and then 100% inclusion and involvement. So let's, that, let's unpack that briefly. Any strong team, any high-performing team starts with strong leadership. Um, so at MMS, we have a leadership philosophy that leaders are not born, but they are made. And therefore, we believe that um, we have leaders in, 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 in all levels of operation and we invest in, 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 in all levels of, of team members to, to do the necessary leadership training and leadership development. Um, secondly, if we look at the alignment of goals, so um, company goals and, uh, and in this case FSP partner goals as well as sponsor goals need to be communicated clearly um, and we need to ensure that team members get, you know, buy into these. So at MMS this is achieved by a yearly goal setting process that is proactively managed with each and every one of our team members uh, to ensure that, um, that there is buy-in, but that there's also alignment of individual goals with the company goals. So um, if we talk about understanding the rules of the game, um, really we're talking about understanding the vision, the mission, the culture. And again, where necessary, of the FSP partner as well as of the sponsor. Um, and really also this comes down to an understanding of, you know, how do we do things at MMS? Um, again, how clearly is this communicated? It needs to be communicated really, really clearly and it needs to be communicated in an ongoing fashion. And then also an understanding of procedures and a culture of compliance to these procedures is really important but also opportunities for improvement of these procedures. Anybody can make suggestions uh, around the improvement of, 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 of the rules uh, of the game that, that we're all playing. 
And then if we talk about an action plan, um, obviously this pertains to more specifically the project level now and allocated projects. Um, but again, are all the team members clear on exactly uh, who's responsible for what on the project, what the, what the deadlines are, um, and, and again, how clearly uh, is that communicated and how comprehensively is that communicated? And then when we talk about uh, support uh, for informed decision making, really, um, if you've implemented the first four elements of a high performing team, you, you really should be creating or you should have created an environment where um, team members understand informed decision making, but they're also free to make this good decisions. And then lastly, when we talk about 100% inclusion and involvement, um, we talk about you know, each and every aspect of the day-to-day -day operations. How inclusive are we of each and every team members? Do we encourage involvement? Uh, and we look at things like how are meetings run? Um, you know, how, are we proactively encouraging and, and, and uh, engagement and providing platforms for engagement? Um, and certainly at MMS, we have uh, a number of engagement activities to facilitate this. And we also have a global engagement uh, committee that certainly in this day and age is very important. Next slide. All right, and then last but not least, but how much effort and responsibility should we take to encourage and support um, continued the, the continued personal growth of each and every one of our team members? So um, at MMS, once again, we have a really strong employee, employee performance review process. Um, and I've mentioned the smart goal setting process, which really is part of the performance review process and we have measurable KPIs and really I think a continued emphasis and focus on this is key to 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 create a culture where uh, employees realize and are supported that that they should also take responsibility for their own personal and professional uh, development. Other factors that contribute to this is, uh, you know, setting clear and measurable career ladders or, and, and, ha and having those in place. Um, supporting team members with with uh, with their career planning, um, providing a platform for them where they where they know that they can achieve their career goals. Um, and that obviously includes the, the employee promote promotion process. Do employees know what they need to achieve? Um, and, and do that, can you get their buy-in to ensure that they work towards uh, th that, that next promotion? And then I've already mentioned the leadership development training that we do uh, at MMS as well. Um, MMS has is, is, is partnered with the Franklin Covey Institute um, to implement leadership training uh, for, for a, a great number of our team members. So we really do take uh, that, that serious and um, it has already yielded some, some great uh, results. So I'd like to end off uh, the session. And as you can see, it, it, it was clearly focused on really, um, you know, how do you look after your team? Um, you know, that, that, that high performance uh, really should come from the team. Um, and, and that's what makes uh, for trust and for, for a great relationship. So I'd like to end off with a quote from Richard Branson. Um, Clients do not come first, employees come first. If you take care of your employees, they will certainly take care of the clients. So thank you very much. Next slide. Jim, I'll pass it over to Jim Balcom now. All right, thank you, Diedrich. Uh, next slide, please. So every organization uses people, processes, and technology to some extent to complete activities that will produce accurate insights as fast as possible. The goal obviously being uh, to get the right medicines to the right people. And we should always be evaluating our organization's people, processes, and technology to determine our level of innovation maturity in order to make continual improvements in these areas. 
However, our internal organization is not the only place we can turn to for innovation. A strong FSP partner is one that adds value and helps their sponsors to innovate. Uh, next slide. The Avoca Group recently published a report that evaluated innovation efforts within both sponsors and CROs. They asked employees from 89 separate sponsors and 128 service providers their perspectives on several questions pertaining to innovation within their company. They asked questions uh, like, uh, does your company recognize and adopt innovative approaches? Only 66% of sponsor employees believe this statement was true, while 94% of CRO employees believe this statement. They asked whether respondents believe their company is willing to try and fail. And we're gonna come back to the topic of failure in a few minutes. In the pursuit of innovative approaches, only 64% of sponsor employees believe this statement was true, while 90% of CRO employees believe this statement. And then finally, respondents were asked whether they believe their company invests an appropriate amount of money and resources into innovative approaches. 61% of sponsor employees believe this statement was true, while 91% of CRO employees believed it. Now, the Avoca Group also made the following statements in their report. Providers are seen as leading the way in terms of innovation through specific, those specific technologies are widely known by both audiences, meaning sponsors and CROs, providers show broader adoption. Now, the good news is that your organization already may be innovative, but you can partner with FSPs to augment uh, that innovation. And um, the, the great statement to, is, is to say that their strengths become your strengths. But specifically, why should sponsors rely on their FSP partners for innovation? Uh, next slide. We're often in the best position to bring innovation to the table because we, we have a broad view into the industry. We partner with sponsors of all sizes. This allows us a view into many organizations, processes and maturity levels. It allows us to evaluate and, and maybe more importantly, anticipate their needs. It allows us to make recommendations based on our experience over many years working on different scientific, regulatory, and operational challenges. Typically, FSPs are integrated and working in their client systems. This allows us to get a 360 degree view of the environment and, and the why behind what we're doing. It enables our team members who are encouraged to always be looking for ways to innovate to see those opportunities more clearly. It could be said that FSPs are more nimble and in a greater position to push the boundaries. And finally, we here at MMS are and, and want to continue to be known as a high performing FSP. Now, this drives us to innovate and, and focus on our ability to repeat a given process in a variety of circumstances with many changing factors. We can add to your existing processes and bring suggestions to further enhance the way that you operate. We, we highly recommend a review of your FSP strategy around innovation to ensure that they're partnering with you and adding the value in this area. Uh, next slide. Well, let me give you an example of how we brought an innovative approach to an FSP relationship. MMS has engaged with uh, uh, this client since 2012, partnering with them in regulatory operations, medical writing, and project management. This particular group they had data coming in and in, in multiple standards from a variety of sources for different purposes at varying times. They needed to improve their ability to make faster, better decisions using disparate data, and this need was magnified with the number of studies and vendors involved in this situation. Because we were a long-standing partner with this client, we knew them and we saw an opportunity to bring innovation and process efficiency through the implementation of our data size technology solution, which would support their DSMBs. Data size is our innovative cloud-based technology platform that blends data from really any source, providing faster insights and real world, real world solutions. 
It's a secure, scalable data science platform that allows clients to immediately visualize their real world data and other clinical data through three state of the art modules called Curate, Analyze and Explore. Now, in this engagement, from a people perspective, we were already ingra ingrained in their processes. So our team members were able to see a need and envision the right solution for them. We worked with the clients, clinicians and safety physicians to determine what their DSMB and other safety monitoring data analysis needs were. Our team was able to communicate with technical and non-technical stakeholders, which is really an important skill for your FSP partner to have. From a processes perspective, we worked under the sponsors SOPs, but you know, for clients who don't have them in place, we can use our own SOPs or help them to start to develop the appropriate SOPs. And then lastly, from a technology perspective, we saw the need and suggested the sponsor take advantage of the MMS data size platform. We were working directly in their systems. We developed APIs for integrating structured data like SDTMs, but data size also can handle unstructured data such as social media data. And data size was able to efficiently integrate data from multiple studies. Now, in the end, our client benefited from the fact that we not only brought the skilled resources to the table, but we also brought an innovative mindset through our technology offerings that helped to solve their needs. Now, the results, uh, internal, internal and DSMB team members, both technical and non-technical resources, were able to gain a granular level view into the data. Data size delivered the information in near real time, giving them the decision-making power they needed when they needed it. And then finally, the combination of our people, processes, and technology helped to increase the productivity and decision-making ability of their entire internal and external team. Uh, next slide. All right, well, up until this point, we've talked about how FSPs can partner with sponsors to drive innovation, but we also wanted to give you some ways that you can foster innovation in your own organization. We encourage our clients to create roles in their organizations that are dedicated to innovation. MMS has cr created a specific role in our company as well as a team of cross-functional experts to lead innovation research and efforts. Secondly, we recommend allowing and encouraging your, or your employees to set aside time in their daily activities to research and evaluate their processes to look for opportunities for innovation. We've embraced the quote, which you see at the bottom of this slide from Peter Shen at J&J, who simply said, innovation is a company sport. If you haven't already done so, begin to analyze and document processes. This can help to identify processes that are manual that can be automated. And then next, this, uh, <laughs> this sounds counterintuitive and maybe even revolting to some leaders, but celebrate risk-based failure in your organization. Now, by risk-based failure, we mean failures that won't neg negatively impact critical business activities. What you're trying to do is unlock the creativity of your team members. Remember, innovation is a company sport. We know, all of us know, that when people are in some way punished, that they will be less apt to explore new ways of doing things. Allow your employees the freedom to create with no possibility of embarrassment or punishment. In fact, celebrate those failures because they equate to effort. Hold innovation competitions. It's an exciting time at MMS right now. We're in the midst of our first ever innovation competition. We had 19 teams enter the competition and we chose five teams to move forward to the final presentation stage. We've been really impressed, not only with the innovation ideas from the five teams that were chosen to move forward, but also with the ideas that came from the other teams. We're documenting all ideas and we'll review them throughout our innovation efforts over the coming year. And it's just been a, a, a lot of fun. We've seen great excitement and energy and interest in this competition through all levels of our organization, as well as from all functional areas. And then finally, you welcome inputs and ask for more from your partners. From an MMS perspective, some of our most successful and to be honest with you, satisfying relationships have been those that we could engineer innovative, customized solutions for our clients and measure improvement in productivity. 
Remember, the strength of your partners is also your strength, and, and you can rely on that. So with that, I will turn it back over to you, Don, to wrap up our conversation today. Thank you, Jim, uh, as well as Diedrich and Danelle for your insights. Uh, as mentioned at the start of this call, we'd like to move into the Q&A portion of this webinar. Uh, so if you do have a question, please drop it in the Q&A function there. Uh, just look for the little question mark icon. Uh, so we have a few questions thus far. Uh, Jim, the first question is for you, actually. When you described the work you did for your client, you said that data size delivers results in near real time. Uh, can you define uh, near real time? Yeah, yeah that's, that's a great question. So data size can be configured to uh, process data based on the needs of the client. Uh, near real time could literally mean minutes in the case of social media data, or data size could be configured to process data you know, data or daily, weekly, monthly, or really at any interval, again, depending on the needs of the client. Okay, wonderful. Um, Jim, there was another question for you as well. What's the most important characteristic of an innovation focused organization? Yeah, that's that's a that's a great question. And I, I, I love being asked that. Um, really a, an innovation focused organization and one that's going to be successful is, is one where innovation is uh, endorsed and advocated from the highest levels, from the top executives in, in the company or in the department. If executives believe in and, and continue to push their organization to innovate, and, and that's a, a consistent um, belief from the executives and the chances of success you know, greatly increase. Okay, wonderful. Thanks, Jim. Um, Diedrich, there were a few questions that came in during your portion of the call as well. Um, when, uh, so first question for you, Diedrich, can you elaborate on the leadership development that the team does to ensure better FSP relationships? Thanks, Don. Yeah, so as I mentioned uh, during my presentation, we have uh, taken uh, our leadership development and the de leadership training very seriously and for that reason we've partnered with uh, the Franklin Covey Institute um, and really based uh, our training on uh, one of their very successful leadership programs um, and it really focuses on equipping um, leaders in, in, in strategic positions with um, you know the important elements that are required for uh, effective effective leadership. Um, it's a it's almost a year long program, and um, you know it it, it 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 divides our leaders into working groups, and um, they get together weekly for discussions around the practical implementation. And specifically, once those principles have been been learned, um, talking about FSP relationships. You know how do you go back? And take take uh, you know some 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 leadership principles and implement that uh, in your existing FSP partnerships. Maybe an example that I can use is um, you know the the actual execution of strategy, um, or uh, you know as as a leadership role, or, or how do you you know coaching as a leadership role? How do you coach team members to actually uh, attain better performance from the individuals and from the team as a whole? Thank you, Diedrich. Um, one more question for you as well. Uh, what kind of activities does MMS employ to ensure global engagement, especially during these remote working COVID impacted uh, times that we're in? Thanks, Don. Yeah, that's uh, an interesting one. Um, you know, at MMS, we've 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 really formed uh, uh, a um, an engagement committee. And we've ensured that there's re regional representation from 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 all all our regional locations. Um, and the idea was just to get um, some heads together um, so that we can get creative around designing fun projects um, that really uh, would get as many as as possible of our one MMS team members across the globe 
to 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 engage um, from you know from their positions at home, from their positions behind the screen. Um, so so the challenge was to was to was to design some some uh, and come up with with some some interesting activities. Um, and some of the things that we we have done is to to do lucky draw competitions. Uh, where we encourage team members to submit videos or visual um, visual aids of how they celebrate, for example, their cultural heritage or or, or something specific, um, you know, of that nature. Um, but but really, the idea is to is to um, is to create any activities that um, that will that will evoke participation uh, from as many team members as possible and, and and in the process you know to keep it fun and if you can educate the team on something while you do that then that's a bonus wonderful thank you Diedrich uh, and thank you Jim and Danelle again um, for everyone listening uh, if you have any additional questions on what you heard today please follow up with your point of contact at MMS directly or feel free to email media at mmsholdings.com and we'll direct you to one of the presenters. Um, for additional free webinars, visit mmsholdings.com slash webinars or follow us on LinkedIn for updates. Thank you everyone for listening and have a great day.